One of the most common questions I get is, should I be using Power BI to build dashboards instead of Excel? Now, if you ask a Power BI fan this question, they'll tell you, you should definitely use Power BI. And if you ask an Excel fan, they'll tell you, you should definitely use Excel. But to get an unbiased answer, you need someone who knows both. And I've taught thousands of people how to build dashboards in both Power BI and Excel, and I believe they each have a time and place. So in this video, I'm going to cover the differences and pros and cons of each, and you can be sure it's going to be a balanced view. The first thing to consider is the learning curve required to build dashboards in each tool. Power BI requires some new skills in the form of Power Query to get and transform the data and Power Pivot to model it. Then you need to know how to write measures using the DAX formula language. Plus, there's a whole new charting engine to learn, as well as how to share reports and how to schedule their refresh. As you can see, with lots of features comes lots of learning. Excel, on the other hand, is relatively straightforward, especially if you're already familiar with formulas, pivot tables, and charts. Because if you have these three skills, then you already have what it takes to build dashboards in Excel. However, if you want to benefit from the same Power Query and Power Pivot tools available in Power BI, then you'll be pleased to know that Excel has these exact same tools, which means if you work with messy data, you can use Power Query to automate the cleaning and gathering of that data. And if you work with big data, then you can use the Power Pivot model in Excel to handle millions of rows of data and write more advanced DAX measures, just like in Power BI. In terms of charting, Power BI has a huge selection of charts, which are called visuals. There are multiple integrated mapping visuals available you can create your own custom visuals or use a custom visual from the shared custom visuals gallery. Excel also has a huge selection of charts, but it's light on mapping visuals. So if this is important to you, then keep that in mind. There's no way to build your own custom chart in Excel, but because they're highly flexible, there are workarounds for almost everything. The first area where Power BI shines above Excel is the interactivity available, but the customization options available in Power BI are vast compared to Excel. Let's take a look. In Power BI, we can format slices to display as a list or a drop down or buttons like we have in Excel. And for date slices like this one, we have between, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. You can also nest fields and show them in a hierarchy. Then in the formatting pane, we can set the slicer to allow the user to only select one item as well as many other formatting options. Whereas Excel slices are very limited in that you can have buttons and if you have date slices, you can have a timeline, but unlike Power BI, there's no setting option to prevent the user from selecting more than one item. Needless to say, Excel slices need some love from the Microsoft Excel team. The next amazing feature available in Power BI is the ability to click on an element in a visual and have other visuals on the page cross filter and highlight that selected value. Here you can see as I click on a brand in the first visual, the bars in the second visual highlight the data for the selected brand. Effectively, the bars in the visual behave like a slicer. In this example, there's only two visuals, but this functionality can be applied to all visuals in a dashboard, or you can pick and choose which visuals respond to cross filtering and highlighting. In Excel, you can mimic this behavior to a degree using slices, Power Pivot DAX measures, and some clever chart alignment, but it's not as versatile or user-friendly as it is in Power BI because only the slicer responds to the clicks. In Power BI, we can drill down to lower levels in visuals. In the top left of the Power BI visuals, there are drill down buttons available when there's more than one field in the axis labels. Similarly, in Excel, you can use the expand and collapse buttons to drill up and down when there's more than one field in the axis labels. And lastly, Power BI's drill through feature allows you to navigate to another view of your report 
and filter at the same time. Here you can see I'm right clicking on the column for the regular class of the catalog channel. Drill through takes me to another report which is now filtered for the catalog channel and regular class. Similarly, I have another report set up for brands which I can drill through and filter on the supplier, Fabricum, and automatically my brand report is filtered for Fabricum because that's the supplier I chose to drill through on. Now unfortunately we don't have the equivalent of this feature in Excel. You could set up hyperlinks to navigate to reports on other sheets in your Excel file, but the filtering wouldn't get applied at the same time. When it comes to analytics, Power BI has some amazing built-in visuals that allow you to understand the composition of your data and drivers of metrics. But nothing beats the flexibility of Excel when it comes to entering data and analyzing it with formulas and pivot tables. Let's take a look at what's available. In Power BI, we have matrix tables, which are similar to pivot tables available in Excel, but with less functionality. Power BI's decomposition tree lets you visualize data across multiple dimensions, automatically aggregating data and enabling drill down into your dimensions in any order. It's a valuable tool for ad hoc exploration and conducting root cause analysis. With insights, you can tell Power BI Desktop to explain increases or decreases in charts. You can see distribution factors and get fast, insightful analysis about your data. In this example, Power BI has found what's contributing to the increase in gross profit, which pops up as a waterfall chart. Power BI's Key Influences visual helps you understand the factors that drive a metric you're interested in. It analyzes your data, ranks the factors that matter and displays them as key influencers. For example, here I've asked it to rank what factors influences sales to increase. Excel, on the other hand, has far more advanced pivot table abilities, including the ability to write custom DAX measures with Power Pivot pivot tables. Excel's grid and formulas are vastly more flexible than Power BI offers, and this means Excel is still the best tool for financial modeling, budgeting and other ad hoc analysis. Excel also has some AI powered tools, including Ideas, which analyzes and provides high level visual summaries that identify ranks, trends and patterns, as well as outliers. You can also use natural language to ask Excel questions of your data, just like you can in Power BI. So you can see that Power BI has some amazing tools but Excel offers unparalleled flexibility. One area where Excel doesn't come close to Power BI is with sharing of reports. With Power BI, you can easily view reports on any device or even create your own app. To view reports, users are required to log into the Power BI service, which then checks their permissions and only displays the appropriate reports. You can even build one report and then restrict what data each user can see based on their role. For example, if you have regional managers, you can set reports to automatically filter the data to a specific manager's region upon opening of that report. With Excel, the options for sharing are limited to emailing files, saving them on shared network drives where others can open them, or embedding reports in web pages using the web app. The downside is there's no real way to secure your data. Even if you password protect the file, a savvy user can still get to the data. So if securing the data is critical, your best option is Power BI. Both Excel and Power BI have the Power Query tool for automating the getting and transforming of data. Power BI can also connect to real-time streaming data sources, but then so can Excel. You just need to know how to set it up. Lastly, for a limited number of data sources, Power BI has Direct Query, which allows direct connection to the source. That is, there's no need to import data to Power BI, and this is great for working with very large data sets. Power BI and Excel can work with millions of rows of data because both have the Power Pivot model. Of course, if you have a version of Excel that doesn't have Power Pivot, then you're limited to the million or so rows in the Excel worksheet. Power BI has built-in refresh options which vary depending on the source of the data. You can schedule a refresh 
or if the data is stored online, the refresh is automatic. Now, Excel doesn't have any built-in refresh options for regular pivot tables, but you can program it with VBA, or if your pivot tables are Power Pivot based, you can schedule a refresh. To get a Power BI account, you need a work email address. Gmail, Outlook, Hotmail, etc. aren't allowed. However, there are workarounds available to individual users where you can sign up for a trial Office account, which comes with a suitable email address. Installing the Power BI desktop software and getting access to company databases typically requires IT's involvement. Excel, on the other hand, doesn't require any additional software or add-ins to build dashboards, which means you can be up and running in no time. Probably one of the biggest barriers to using Power BI is that there's a monthly subscription cost for both the creator of the reports and the consumers of your reports. It currently starts at US $10 per person per month, and while that doesn't seem like a lot, it can quickly add up. There are pricing plans for corporates that bring the cost per person down, so if you're looking at a lot of users, this may be an option. Excel, of course, is already available on nearly everyone's computer that requires reports, so typically there's no additional cost involved. Now, both Power BI and Excel have far more features than those I've covered here, and you may find some of those other features sway your preference. The purpose of this video was to compare these tools purely for building dashboards, so I've focused on those key features. I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.